Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a quick look at the DVSA's system or sequence of car control. Um, now, if like me, you are acting as the accompanying driver to a 17 year old, and here's what I made earlier, um, you, it's highly likely that you will have taken your driving test broadly within the same era that I did. And so you will probably have some recollection of the mirror signal maneuver mantra that we uh, would have learnt many years ago when we took our first first driving tests. Um, <clears throat> and what you'll be pleased to know that in the current issue of the Highway Code, we have a quick look at pages uh, 54, 55, amongst other places, you will still see reference to remembering mirror signal and maneuver. So the base principle hasn't changed since we were. 17. Um, <clears throat> but if we unpack that a little bit further and we have a look at uh, the DVSA's um, official and comprehensive text to, to driving, um, which actually is a text I reread re last Christmas, I would highly recommend it um, to both new students and also their accompanying drivers. If it's been a few years since you've uh, done any driver training yourself, um, it's a fantastic text. I certainly learned a lot. Uh, despite having done a lot of driver training since my original test. But if we refer to that, and we have a look um, initially on pages 82, 83, we find that the mirror signal maneuver routine is unpacked in a little bit more detail to create a full sequence or system which can then be habitualized um, as a safe way of approaching all hazards. So the mirror first element, followed by considering whether a signal is necessary, remains the same. But the maneuver part of it that we remember is then broken down into other sections in terms of the road positioning of the car, the speed of the car, and then having got the speed correct for the hazard, the gear, the appropriate gear for that speed. And then we look, assess, decide and act. And that last piece all sounds very complicated, but the decision we're making is invariably a decision on whether to stop or whether to go. Um, <clears throat> and as we will come on to look at in more detail, and we have to look at uh, the diagrams which explain this approach, um, if we use that sequence in that order, so this isn't you know alphabetti spaghetti um, where you throw the numbers up and see the order they come down in, if we follow the mirror signal position speed look sequence, um, it should always guide us through a hazard and ensure that we arrive in the right position at the right speed in the right gear, having first looked around us and told people of our intentions. <clears throat> so, if you then go on to uh, more advanced driver training for your own driver development or for blue light uh, training, the, the, the manual you would refer to, which again is highly recommended by the DVSA as advanced driver training, would be Roadcraft. Um, and similarly, they have a system which actually dovetails perfectly with the DVSA's MSPSL system. And um, the Roadcraft system is IPSCA, Information, Position, Speed, Gear, and then Acceleration through the Hazard. So. I'll come back to that um, at the end of this video for those who are more interested in, in advanced driving and talk about that in more detail and how the two dovetail. But the key take out of that is setting yourself up with these firm foundations of the DVSA system will stand you in good safe, um, safe position for safe, uh, a safe driving career. So applying that, and as um, you may be able to see from the video here, we to make it easy when we're coaching, um, we have put the sequence um, on our dashboard here, so a little bit of masking tape with the, the sequence of letters in the right order will help um, you as the accompanying driver to remember the order in which we, we do this. wouldn't suggest you put it obviously on your, uh, in front of your, your, your pupil who's hopefully focusing on the road ahead. But for example, using our training manual here, if we were going to make a simple left-hand turn from a main road, key thing to note here is the distance back that we start the sequence or system. If you count the little cars, so if that's one car length, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 car lengths back on what we assume is a 30 mile an hour road, 
so just as a as a guide to distance but 10 car lengths back we're checking our mirrors and in that case we're making a left hand turn so we always check the center mirror first followed by the mirror of the direction we're going in so it'd be center mirror left mirror we then consider a signal and in this case for a left hand turn it would be appropriate to put a left hand signal on we position the car accordingly in the road space. In this case, it would be slightly nearer the curb line. Um, and then we enter the speed phase. And as you may be able to see here, um, we are initially reducing speed because we'll be coming along here a straight road um, and have gathered some speed. We're looking to make what is a 90 degree turn. So clearly we have to reduce our speed quite significantly so we could get the speed right down on the brakes and take the appropriate gear to make that turn, which is in this case, probably second gear. Key thing to notice, however, is how far back from the actual junction that the speed and gear phase has been um, undertaken. The mistake people often make is to be braking right up to the junction and almost still on the brakes as you make the turn. So what we're looking to do is get our speed and gear phase done one, two, three car lengths back maybe from the junction as a target. And then all we're left to do in the sequence is to look assess, decide and act. So we'd look into that junction. Is it clear? Is there any obstruction? Is it safe for us to proceed? And then that is the simple decision, go or pause. So that very briefly is the DVSA's system or sequence of car control. And through the rest of this video, we're gonna be applying that to a number of different hazards. So a hazard is anything which causes you to change direction or speed. So that may be a left-hand turn as shown here, a right-hand turn, a roundabout, passing parked cars, um, or perhaps a pinch point or any other obstruction that we may meet in the road. So as I say, in the, in the rest of this video, we'll have a look at the practical application of that and how you can help your, uh, your pupil as an accompanying driver to develop that sequence and system of car control. Fascinating, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs>
second gear drive on, checking our mirrors, signalling on exit. New road, new mirrors. All of the um, bends on the right with the junction on it, and the continuous solid white lines, indicate a loss of visibility. We're not going to bring the power in yet until we can see whether anybody's waiting to turn into this junction across our park. Check the mirrors, check we're not being overtaken. Good look down the road to check nobody's overtaken coming the other way before bringing the gas in. Straight up to the speed limit. So again we're approaching a speed reduction, so it drops from 50 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour, so we still run through the system there. We're checking our mirrors and considering a need to signal, do we need to show brake lights? Is there a car very close behind? And at the moment the answer is no, so we can just gently come off the gas and let the speed drop to achieve the speed limit. Having got the speed right, we then take the gear for that speed, so drop the third gear. So now the car is very much on the gas pedal. Remember it works in both directions. So in a more flexible lower gear, um, if we come off the gas it will retire the car more accelerate it will be more progressive acceleration. Scanning the pedestrian crossing. Now looking for the next roundabout where we intend to turn right. So centre mirror, right mirror, right signal. This mirror signal position is to the right hand lane. Speed phase, well in this case the speed phase is going to bring us to a halt. And we take first gear and then we start looking across for our opportunity but being, making very sure that the white Audi ahead of us is cleared before we start our move onto the roundabout. What my intention would be here is to short shift into second gear before we cross the giveaway line, so we're then in a flexible gear to go all the way round the roundabout. So the second gear, short shifting, left mirror, left signal, move the car over, new road, new mirrors. Immediately looking ahead to the next roundabout where our intention is to turn right, so mirrors, signal, position over into the right hand of the two lanes, we're in the speed phase now, we're already at a sensible speed for approach, it's about 20 miles an hour, starting our looking, assessing, deciding, and we can flow on. Left mirror, left signal, is the breakaway signal on exit. Pedestrian crossing is clear, checking behind. Just see the, the sign for the mini roundabout just under the railway arch there. So again, we're going to turn right. So centre mirror, right mirror, right signal. Now we're past that junction. Position to the centre line. There's our view. Flowing on, make an attempt to go round the disc. Not really time on a mini roundabout to signal breakaway on exit. So the breakaway signal is more for larger roundabouts when you are breaking away, peeling away from that large centre disc. New road, new mirrors. Checking the right hand mirror before moving out, keeping good space, door width from these parked cars. Some pedestrians, be mindful any children that could be coming through the, the gaps in those cars. And now the road is clearer, we can gently bring the speed up to the speed limit of 30 miles an hour. right-hand turns at roundabouts, but we use the system, so mirrors, signal, position, speed, look, assess, decide and act, we use that system really to, to help us, to guide us um, on our approach to, to any hazard, be that a junction, turning left or right, um, moving around parked cars or pinch points or other obstructions in the road, so it's really any hazard and a hazard is anything that causes you to change speed or direction of the car.
again, let's have a look now at applying the system to guide us on our approach to the right hand turn we want to make. So on approach, we can just see the right hand turn just beyond where that uh, jogger is now. So I'm checking my centre mirror, my right mirror, being mindful obviously of the pedestrian's near side. Signal, so mirror signal, positioning to the centre line. We're in the speed phase now, so I'm reducing my speed and timing my approach to see if a gap will open, which in this case it has. So look where my left, where my right hand goes to the top of the wheel. We take second gear, look into the junction, final check in that right hand mirror, lifesaver look for any motorcyclist who may be mistakenly overtaking me, and then we turn into the junction. New road, new mirrors. Same again, our intention in a moment will be to take a left hand turn. So I'm already starting the system, checking the mirrors. Past the left hand turn, we're going to put a signal on here. Mirror it, signal, position, speed, and gear are fine. So it's simple pull push steering, new road, new mirrors. Our intention is to turn left and we can see that left is the only option so mirrors signal position well it's well round to the left circuit of roundabouts but this time in reverse so we're using the system to make left hand turns at roundabouts so first exit center mirror left mirror left signal mirror signal positioning is to the left hand lane we're in the speed phase now bringing the speed right down so we could stop if we need to but we're looking now for our gap to open and there it is we can flow on new road new mirrors So with roundabouts, our mantra is very much preparing to stop. We must be able to stop if the gap doesn't open for us, but very actively looking to go. So we shouldn't be bringing the car to a halt unnecessarily at the giveaway lines. If there's no reason to pause to give way, um, then we shouldn't. Roundabouts are designed to keep traffic flowing and to move larger volumes of traffic without the need to stop in the way that traffic lights would, would stop you. So on the approach, the key thing is to have taken in information from the route boards, know where you want to be going, um, have got the speed right. And this is a mistake a lot of people make, they approach the giveaway lines too quickly. So you take your speed out, a good number of car lengths back from the giveaway line, so you're at a nice controlled speed that will enable you either to flow on at the correct speed to negotiate the roundabout, or it will be slow enough that if you do need to stop the car, if the situation changes and the gap doesn't open for you, you can bring it to a gentle, um, gentle stop without extreme braking. So we're not everything nice and smooth. Checking the mirrors. Pedestrians near side, and the cyclists off side. Slight position of safety to the centre line. Off the gas now, just letting the lower gear retire us on the hill.
Okay, so we are now just approaching the mini roundabout. We can see the hazard triangle, the mini roundabout, and the blue disc at the end. And our intention is to turn left, first exit. So centre mirror, left mirror, left signal. Positioning is to the curb line, and we're in the speed phase now. But it's a closed view, so we can take a rolling first gear on approach because the only conceivable gear was going to be first gear. So we're now prepared and ready. And there's our gap. Checking the mirror down the inside for any cyclists. New road, new mirrors. Looking ahead now to the pedestrian crossing, we can see both sides of it. And the button doesn't appear to be pressed, so I'm not anticipating that will change, but I am checking my mirrors. My intention at the next roundabout is to turn the left, first exit. So left mirror at the left signal position as we would normally to the left hand lane anyway. We're in the speed phase, and we can gently bring that speed back. But as the gap opens, we can be back on the gas, just reapplying the signal at cancelled. Final uh, mirror check on exit. Next roundabout, our intention is to turn right. Centre mirror, right mirror, right signal. Position to the right hand lane. In the speed phase now, we're down at about 20 miles an hour. And actually, we can flow on. So the gap's opening nicely. By timing our approach, can almost make the gaps work for us. Checking the left mirror, the left signal, positioning the car out. New road, new mirrors, scanning ahead now immediately to the pedestrian crossing. Which again, we can see both sides and the button doesn't appear to have been pressed. So looking ahead to the next roundabout, our intention is to go straight ahead. So mirrors, we're not going to signal on approach this time because if we're not turning left, we're not turning right, we're going straight ahead. So positioned in the left hand lane, in the speed phase now, bringing the brakes in, taking the gear to match that speed. Left mirror, left signal on exit. As you can see that was a relatively small roundabout but there was time to um, signal our intention to exit. Okay, so we've had a little drive, a little few loops around the block, and had a look at the practical application of the uh, mirror signal position speed look uh, sequence or routine, as recommended by the uh, DVSA. And if you want to have a look at that in more detail, it's on pages 82, 83 of uh, the DVSA's official guide to driving, the essential skills. So highly recommend having a look at that. Um, we said we'd have a look at how the DVSA system then relates to um, advanced driver training. So the systems that would be found in Roadcraft. Um, and this is something you can go on to once you've got your license, you can get involved with organizations such as IAM RoadSmart and ROSPA. And these have very experienced volunteers who will um, take you out and coach you as a qualified driver and help you to develop and, and um, progress your driving skills and safety. So just, um, just to really illustrate how the two dovetail together, because it's very easy, people parrot out, oh yeah, mirror, mirror signal maneuver, um, and it almost becomes a, a, noddy, a noddy L driver technique, when in fact it is the fundamental um, core guiding principle of all safe driving. So at whatever level you progress to, um, the MSPSL sequence really underpins everything we then go on to do. So without diving too deep into it um, here, this is just really to see how the two, um, the two systems um, tessellate together. So if we just start looking at each of them. So first two letters of the DVSA system, mirrors and signal, as we've seen throughout. Um, that in advanced driving we refer to that simply as information so from our mirrors and looking around we take in information um, and signals would be um, giving out information to other road users about what we're about to do so what we say in advanced driving is we're going to tug the information so we're going to take in information with our eyes looking at the mirrors and other senses hearing anything else smell in some okay, some circumstances we use that information so we cognitively have a think about what we're going to do with it and then we give out information 
predominantly with our lighting signals, so maybe brake lights or indicators or the other lighting signals we have available to us to tell other road users what we plan to do. So the first two elements really, mirror and signal, are relating to the information phase here. And similarly at the other end, our look, assess, decide and act is again very much taking in information and then using that information to assess and decide what we're going to do. So those elements in um, advanced driving all are termed the information element. And what we recognize is rather than being just sequential lumps, information um, taking in, processing and giving out information really flows throughout the whole of the process. So at any point, if the information, if what we take take in through our senses, what we see changes, we recognize that we aren't um, committed to a course of action. We can always revisit the other elements of the sequence and change it at any point. So that's just the level of difference. In the initial training phases, L training, we're getting you into a routine, um, a safe base level routine. As you become more experienced and develop, you bring in a, a, a degree of flexibility um, to that system. So we've got the information phase, which runs throughout. Then we look at the next element of the phase, and this is the positioning phase, the P for positioning. And as you can see, in both cases, that will be identical. So having decided where we want to go, told people where we're going, so given out, taken in and given out information, we then position the car to an appropriate place on the road for whatever it is we're going to do. And then the next section of the phase is absolutely the same. It's the speed phase. So we need to adjust our speed to get it uh, to an appropriate speed for whatever it is we're going to do. So we've been looking at some right turns on roundabouts. They've been reasonably large roundabouts, so the speed may be 20 miles an hour. Um, if we were going to make a very tight left-hand turn, it may be 5 miles an hour. So the speed will vary depending on what it is we're going to do. The next piece is where it does differ slightly with advanced training because in advanced driver training we very much separate separate out the um, speed phase and the speed phase not always but typically is a reduction in speed so it will typically be a brake and application of the brakes and then once we've got the speed correct we take the gear that's appropriate for that speed um, and so a little mantra we would use is that um, Brakes are for slow, so brakes are used for the slowing speed phase, gears are for go, so we separate out the, the, the two elements. And um, so when you train advanced driver training, we try to avoid overlapping the braking phase and the gear changing phase. Now this is an area where there's um, quite a lot of talk, particularly at the moment, um, Roadcraft has evolved over many, many editions as cars have evolved and we're now in development phases where a lot of cars are moving from three pedal cars, so manual cars, to automatic cars and automated um, manual cars, as well as electric cars which have different transmissions. And these can change gears more quickly, so for example the DSG gearbox we used to have in our other car um, whilst third gear was selected, for example, second gear would be being readied. So um, it's not a case of taking it out of third into neutral and then into second. You're coming out of third and immediately second gear was ready. So that speeds the process. And in, in the current edition of Roadcraft, as I say, it's an evolution, um, but there is quite a bit of discussion about this whole area, sort of, um, what's that, page 37 onwards, a um, little bit of discussion about when it may not be appropriate. But as a general training discipline, to get us into avoiding arriving at a hazard too quickly, um, we train and we, we try and um, encourage ourselves to take the speed out well in advance of a hazard so we are then um, in the correct gear. And this is where the difference and the clarity comes in that we are then, having got the speed appropriate for the hazard we're about to undertake, so those roundabouts turning right 20 miles an hour, we're then ready to accelerate, just gently, to drive through the hazard. So in that case, it was a right turn on a roundabout, or maybe passing parked cars, but we've got our speed, we're in the right gear, and then we back on the gas, moving the car forward so through the hazard. So we've got positive drive through the hazard. What we want to avoid 
is are braking very very late so we're arriving at the roundabout for example right at the giveaway line and we're still on the brakes we're halfway across the roundabout and we're still on the brake pedal because if something changes if something goes wrong fast motorbike that we hadn't seen comes across our path and we're still on the brakes we're a sitting duck we've got nowhere to go the only thing we can do is stop whereas if we're in the correct gear and on the gas pedal we then have an option to drive our way out of the situation so say a lot of information there um particularly for somebody at your your stage of the journey the driver chain training journey um but it just thought it was important to to recognize that the foundations you're laying down here with the dva sa system are fundamental they're not the basics they are the fundamentals of safe driving okay so we'll now pop out and just have a look at that a little bit more on the road few few other examples of how the mspsl system and the ipsca system work in tandem okay so we're going to use the system now to help us make a simple left hand turn what we remember is left hand turns are tighter than right hand turns if you imagine if we were going to turn into that junction on the right quite a wide arc the left turns are much tighter and this one is particularly tricky because we've got two in short succession so i'm checking my mirrors taking in information to see the car behind so i'm now going to give out some information that i intend to slow down i'm using brakes delaying my signal until now off the brakes taking the gear and gently turn into the junction having first looked new road new mirrors so as you can see with that uh, with that situation there we were using brake lights initially if we'd signaled first could potentially have been confusing for anyone who on that occasion there was nobody waiting to pull out of the junction but if somebody had been waiting to come out of the little shop there and we put a signal on they may have assumed we were turning into the shop but equally we had to tell the car behind that we intended to slow down to make the turn so we could then use our brake lights as the first form of communication, first form of signal. Um, and then when we've gone past the first junction, we could then use our left hand signal to confirm our intention. And as long as the person behind is also thinking about um, what information they're receiving, and they're taking that information in um, and using it properly, they should be slowing down. If we're showing brake lights, they should be giving space to us. Unfortunately that's not always the case and so in those situations you'll find the driver behind closes right up um, but that's something you've just got to uh, learn to deal with. Okay so we've had a look at a left hand turn from a residential 30 mile an hour road. We're now out on a national speed limit road. We've got the car up to that uh, 60 mile an hour speed limit. We're going to run through the uh, system and how it informs us. So immediately we can see the triangle hazard warning giving us information that the left turn is coming up. So we're checking our mirrors. The ground behind, but it's a good long way back, but we will put a signal on anyway. Positioning slightly near the side. We're now in the speed phase. So I'm on the brakes, getting the speed right down, off the brakes, taking second gear, looking into the junction before making the turn. New road, new mirrors. So as you can see there, the information phase informs when and how we do the other elements of the system. So I'd noted there was a van behind, it could be a heavily laden works van, so it would probably have taken longer to brake and reduce its speed than I would. However, it was a long way back, so I did need to give it a signal and due warning, um, but I didn't do that particularly early. If that van had been much closer behind me, or had been a heavy lorry, which again would need a longer distance to reduce its speed, I would have been introducing the signalling phases much earlier. So it's very important that um, we're not just robotic in our signalling. This is where it's uh, what the examiners are looking for. It's not just a habitual oh, mirror signal manoeuvre. It's I've looked in my mirrors, I've given it some thought, so I've taken in information, I've used that information cognitively, and then I've signalled at an appropriate time and acted accordingly. The other key thing about the use of the system is obviously as the speeds go up, the forces acting on the car 
also increase. So when we brake, as you probably experienced, if somebody brakes firmly, particularly from higher speed, you'll find the nose of the car, so the mass of the car, goes forward onto its front wheels. And again, when we are making a reasonably tight left-hand turn, as we've just done there, the mass of the car is being transferred. So you've got a combination potentially. If you're still on the brakes at that point, you've got a car that is diving down onto its nose and also leaning over. See, we're entering a national speed limit area. So I'm checking my mirrors before bringing the speed up in case anyone's overtaking, which they're not. So we can gently increase our speed. Then we're taking in information from the road markings. We can see we've got continuous white lines on both sides of the roads, indicating a uh, loss of visibility. And then we're scanning as far as we can see into the distance, taking in information. junction gently turning into it. New road, new mirrors, gently bring the gas back in. Okay, so we're going to have a look at that junction the other direction now. So for this part of our driving plan we're taking the information. So we've got a heavy vehicle ahead and then directly in front of us we've got a pallet lorry. We've got to be thinking, what if? What if one of those pallets fell off? stop in time and we take avoiding action. So having, having a little think about that, I'm keeping a good separation gap on that pallet lorry. And also it's a large vehicle, so if I keep it back, it improves our view. So we can now see the hazard warning sign for that right hand junction. I'm checking my mirrors, putting a signal on, bringing my brakes in. So we're in the speed phase now, get the speed right down off the brakes, taking the gear, final look in the right hand mirror and shoulder for any motorcyclist, new road, new mirrors. So that final look, the look into the junction, just to check there wasn't a large combine harvester blocking my path, and then I'd be straddled halfway across the main road, it's not a good place to be, and I'm also having a final right mirror check and right shoulder glance, just to check there isn't a motorcyclist that I've missed. This chap here, for example, um, maybe been on an overtake. Okay, so our intention is going to be to take uh, the next turning on the right. So we're starting to take in information. First of all, we're warned that there is a junction to our left, so I'm immediately checking my mirrors. There's nobody behind me at the moment. And now we've got the staggered left and right. So there's our right hand junction, mirrors, signal, position, we've got a hatched area. Now I'm in the speed phase, and I'm going to bring the car to a stop on this occasion. Crucially important to keep my wheels straight until I'm now ready to make the turn. Final lifesaver look, right hand mirror and shoulder, new road, new mirrors. Now just to emphasise that point, the reason it is so important to keep your wheels pointing straight is that if we've been shunted from behind at that point, so if somebody misjudged their braking distance and shunted me, if 
my wheels are straight, I carry on straight along the road. If I've started to prepare my wheels for the turn and turn them to the right, I'm then going to be shunted across the carriageway into the path of oncoming traffic. And at any speed, that's not a good collision to have. Um, on a national speed limit road, the outcome is rarely good. So if you remember nothing else from this video, remember that when you are waiting to turn right, across a carriageway into a junction, always keep your wheels facing straight ahead until the absolute moment.